this is going to be very important. Have you ever stumbled across a piano in public, at a train station or airport perhaps, and been excited just to see it sitting there waiting to be played, but despite practicing for weeks or maybe even months, thought to yourself, hmm, what shall I play? Do I know this piece well enough? I don't have the music with me. I don't think that one's very secure. Oh, never mind. Maybe next time. We're going to talk about how you can create a bank of pieces that you don't forget, that you can play or perform with a sense of confidence and security. And it begins with practicing with the end in mind, memory. For this, we're gonna build a memory library for your music. Build your library so that it has three sections, current repertoire, banked classics, and your ultimate collection. Every piece will start out in your current repertoire, and these are the pieces that you're currently playing and practicing. A banked classic is a piece of music that has been learned in such a way to begin with that it doesn't take much time or effort to revive. Often pieces start out in the current repertoire, but are lost forever, not making their way to the banked classics. If this happens, there are really only two reasons. And the first is that you just haven't spent long enough on it yet. The faster that I learn a piece of music, the faster that it fades. And the second one is that you're only using one form of memory. There are three types of memory that are gonna help your pieces to graduate to the banked classics. The one that often gets relied upon is muscle memory. Now this is 100% necessary, but it only takes one slip and you'll feel as though you need to start from the beginning of your piece again. You can level up your muscle memory simply by practicing at different speeds, especially slowly, and practicing hands separately. The second is ear. We're not just talking about being able to listen to something and being able to play it. We're talking about the type of memory that you develop through listening to the piece of music that you're playing. This can be really well developed even before you start playing or practicing the piece. You're likely playing the piece because you like it and you've listened to it before, but try listening to it again, but with an ear on the structure of the piece of music? Can it be broken up into verses or sections? Breaking it down into sections can help us memorize because it helps us to make more sense of what we're trying to learn. The third type of memory is your mind. Know your notes and know your fingerings. Say there's a section of the piece of music that you're learning that you're unsure of. Take these four steps. One, play it really slowly and hand separately to see how well you really know it. Two, play through the notes from memory, naming the notes out loud as you go. Three, this is a fun one. Play all of the notes with only your index finger. This will test how well you really know the notes that you're gonna play and how much you're relying on muscle memory. Four, say out loud the finger numbers that you're using in the passage that you're playing. This really makes sure that there's no disconnect between your brain and what your fingers are playing and massively helps with minimizing any random errors. Pieces will only graduate to the banked classics once these three types of memory are in place, you've been playing the piece for at least a couple of months and you're at the point where you feel like you can perform the piece from memory. Without this level of time commitment, your pieces will fade as quickly as you learn them. But instead, we really want to move our pieces to the next section, which is our ultimate collection. These are the types of pieces that you can perform without having a cue of any sort, that you can remember without much resistance, and that don't require any effort. There are simply two requirements for a piece to enter the ultimate collection. And the first is this. You need to have revisited the piece several times over a period of months, if not years. This is spaced repetition over time. The problem with libraries though is that books get dusty. If you leave pieces too long without pulling them out to dust off, revisit and maintain, they will fade from your memory. And this is exactly why this is going to be very important. Be the manager, the librarian, and the cleaner for your library, and regularly revisit the pieces that you want to hold on to. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.